morning one and all myself dr akash anand i am working as an assistant professor in the department of civil engineering kit's college of engineering kolhapur so today we are going to look into another aspect of highway draining system that is surface drainage system which will be followed by the subsurface drainage system in the session 3 or the module 3 so uh, here we are going to look into the surface drainage system that is further subdivided into three parts that is different types of roadside drains cross drainage structures and different types of energy dissipating structures so we have the components of highway drainage system here that is uh, that are survey uh, surface drainage system and the subsurface drainage system so in the surface drainage system the rainwater on the road surface is lost due to evaporation and percolation the remaining surface water manages to go through uh, a surface drainage which diverts it from the highways and nearby areas so for this purpose camber and uh, or cross slopes are provided on the pavement in order to remove the excess water uh, with their design depending upon the pavement type and the intensity of rainfall the road surface is made impermeable in order to prevent any type of water infiltration then in subsurface drainage system the stability and strength of the road surface entirely depends upon the strength of the soil subgrade that is the bottommost layer with increase in the moisture content the strength of subgrade decreases so the variation in the moisture content of subgrade is caused due to the free water or the ground water table or and every effort is required in order to minimize the moisture content to the least possible value now from usual drainage system only the gravitational water can be drained by the provision of subsoil drainage now surface drainage system collection of surface water uh, we have uh, drainage in rural highways and drains in urban street so drainage in rural highway we have the side drains in these areas which are typically open unlined and trapezoidal cut to suitable cross sections and slopes pavement camber uh, directs uh, surface water across the shoulder uh, which have a steeper slope drains are usually on one on both the sides of the embankments or it can be on both the sides of the roads with cuts in restricted spaces covered drains with coarse sand gravel layers are used for safety while drains in urban street it's slightly different so in urban roads uh, underground uh, longitudinal drains are provided due to the limitation of land width available and the presence of footpath and uh, dividing the island other road facilities so this is provided where there is a lesser number of natural water courses and in the presence of impervious surfaces water is collected in the catch pits at suitable intervals and lead through the underground drainage pipes then we have uh, drainage in hill roads so in the hill roads there are complex drainage problems and providing a drainage system in a hill area is very costly so water flowing down the hill has to be efficiently intercepted and disposed of down hill side by constructing suitable cross drainage works catch water drains at the upper high hill side uh, sloping drains and cross slopes are provided to drain out the water whereas in side uh, side drains are provided in case of only at the hill side if hill roads are not properly drained the rock slides and slips may occur blocking the road during monsoon season the shape of the side drains is made in such a way that vehicles can park on that space during emergency crossing or parking different types of roadside drain so on the basis of the shape of the drain the roadside drain may be rectangular trapezoidal triangular or semicircular the type of drain may be angle drain saucer drain or uh, curb and channel drain as mentioned earlier cross drainage structures are the structures which uh, are provided wherever the streams have to cross a road uh, roadway facility the water from the side drains is also often taken across the structures in order to divert the water away from the road to a water course or a valley next we have the various types of cross drainage structures so first among them is the culvert 
So it's a closed conduit placed under the embankment to carry the water across the roadway in term is actually termed as culverts. According to NRS uh, 2070, culverts are the bridging structures of linear waterway spanning less than about 6 meter. It is extensively used in road drainage system. In fact, more than 75% of the cross drainage structures are culverts. A culvert is more hydraulically efficient than the minor bridge and discharge through a culvert is more than a minor bridge. Functions of culverts. So collection and the transport of water across the road so as to not cause any type of damage to the road bank or the stream bed by scoring. To provide the sufficient waterway to prevent heading up of water above the road surface. So these are the basic functions of providing culverts. Then we have various type of culverts. The first among them is the pipe culvert which we can see in the figure which is shown on the right hand side. So the pipe culvert, it is used for very small streams with a minimum uh, cover of 50 centimeter to uh, reduce the traffic road, the minimum diameter of 600 mm, made up of uh, stoneware, concrete, RCC. Standard size is 0.5 meter, 0.75 meter, 1 meter, 1.25 meters, 2 meters. For the large areas, multiple pipes are joined together due to 2.5 meter length limit per pipe. Okay, so that is uh, about pipe culvert and uh, it can be clearly seen in this figure. So I hope it is clear to all of you. Then uh, you have uh, box culvert which is also shown here uh, in the figure for your uh, proper understanding. So it is usually suitable for the large flow with boulder movements. Okay, as you can see in the figure also that lot of boulders are uh, big rocks or boulders are lying there. So, uh, and these are used where the soil below the foundation is not suitable for individual footings. Rectangular passage size should be minimum of 60 centimeter by 60 centimeter. Height rarely exceeds 3 meters. Now, what are the benefits? Long lifespan, lasts long, okay. Then you have uh, high hydraulic efficiency and the durable, uh, it is durable in harsh conditions as well and resistant to, it is resistance, uh, it has a good resistance towards uh, the debris uh, damage, okay. Then you have the slab culvert, so these are used in the stream with the boulder movement and debris flow. These, uh, these culverts are used when the water, is, uh, water, water opening is uh, less than 15 meters square and uh, road crosses the waterway on a relatively high embankment. Free board of generally 0.5 meter is seen in this type of culvert, thus no pressure flow occurs in this culvert. So this can be also seen in this figure. Then we have the arch culvert. So these culverts are suitable in high drainage areas and low debris flow areas. These culverts are constructed when the high fillings are involved and there is heavier loading on the culvert. Span of each arch should be kept less than 3 meters. Then we have bridges. So it is a structure which is constructed over a water course or any obstacle in order to carry the traffic over it. In NRS 2070, bridges are the structures having linear waterway span more than about 6 meters. Now, uh, bridges can be classified on various factors, four of them are mentioned here. On the basis of uh, construction materials, we have three types such as uh, st steel bridges, concrete bridges, timber bridges, etc. On the basis of structural point of view, we have cantilever bridges, suspension bridges, moving bridges, etc. On the basis of span length, we have the minor bridges uh, up to 30 meters, major bridges up to uh, above 30 meters and the long bridge above uh, 120 meters. On the basis of load carrying capacity also, we have uh, various uh, types of bridges like class 70, 40, 30, 9, 3 and 1. The classes 70, 40 and 30 corresponds to class AA, class A and class B respectively based on the load carrying capacity of that particular bridge. The details of this will be uh, studied as a part of uh, bridge engineering. 
here we can see the various uh, uh, parts of a bridge which is also shown in the figure as well. So, first we have the foundation that is the bottommost uh, part of the bridge which is essential for handling the heavy loads and uh, it should be uh, it is easy to construct on rocky strata then it requires well sinking or Cajun type of piers or abutments if the rock strata are unavailable. Then just above that comes the substructure which lies between the decking and the foundation decking is the topmost part uh, that will be seen in that figure. Uh, then includes it also includes the wing walls, piers and abutments. Uh, the choice of abutment uh, may be based on the type of the soil and uh, it is usually uh, the substructure is usually made up of uh, brick masonry, stone masonry, PCC or RCC. Then comes the topmost uh, part that is a uh, superstructure which uh, comes above the decking area and it is usually made up of timber, steel, RCC or pre-stressed cement concrete. Then we have the causeways. So, it is usually preferred uh, for the roads which are not used much or I should say less important roads where the flow depth is less than equal to 1.5 meter. Therefore, it is for like uh, cost saving. Okay. Then uh, you have uh, uh, water flow condition uh, during flood at various places the water has the tendency to flow over the road. Therefore, it stops the traffic flow temporarily. Okay. So, these are all causeways and uh, the bed slope should be less than equal to 4 to 5 percent to prevent vehicle skidding. Uh, typical flow uh, depth should also not exceed 30 centimeter most of the time of the year. And there are two types of causeways, one is low level causeways, another one is high level causeways are also, cause as, uh, also called as submersible causeways. Uh, in the low level cross causeways, uh, construction uh, it has to, the construction has to be at a stream uh, bed level and uh, it allows the flood waters to pass over the road surface and it remains dry most of the time while in high level causeways uh, the vents below the uh, below the causeways allow uh, the regular flow under the road okay and the flood waters uh, will pass over the road surface and it is usually constructed over the stream bed okay Then we have the aqueduct, so it is a type of open or closed conduit over the roadway and uh, it drains water across the road with pillar supports and it is ideal for the hill roads wherever the culverts are not possible to be provided. Okay. Then we have the inverted siphon, it uh, is used to lower, it is the, uh, it lowers the conduit in uh, inner, uh, sorry, invert level. Okay and uh, the inlet and outlet pipes uh, manage the water flow which we can see in the figure that uh, inlet pit and outlet pit has been clearly shown in the figure then it is also it is basically used when both the culverts and aqueducts uh, are not feasible so here we finish with the session 2 or the module 2 on highway drainage in the next uh, module uh, we are going to look into the subsurface drainage system thank you